Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile, and this is the Westone Mach 60, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Jackrabbit Media for providing the Westone Mach 60 for a review to greatly appreciate it. Jackrabbit Media, you rock. Alright, so the Westone Mach 60, these will set you back $1,100 from your bank account. They are a six balanced armature driver IEM with a three way passive crossover. 35 ohms of impedance, 100 decibels of sensitivity, and a frequency response range of 8 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The Westone Mach 60 comes in this nice box. You get some branding on the front, some information about the different technologies on the, on the back side, a list of what's included, and then the specs on the other side. Taking off that sleeve, you're greeted by a big old chunk of foam with a bunch of accessories packed inside. Those accessories include a rubber wire management, which you have a little hole here, and then you just take the one end and loop it through the hole, and it stays in place with your cable. Very nice setup. And then you get a carabiner clip, do not use this for climbing. And then you have a cleaning tool. And then you get a bag of tips, which includes foam and silicone tips. And they look like this. They are very tall and kind of narrow. You got a very, very small bore and they're color coded. I use the blue color tip. Same thing with the foams. The foams are a little bit on the stiffer side. They're not a super cushy um, type of foam, but I find that the foams work very well, especially with isolation. You get a little bit better of a seal and a little bit more base impact and a little bit more body in the, in the notes, but overall, it's not much of a difference compared to the silicones, and I prefer the, the feel of the silicones, and so I use those instead. And then you get a very nice Pelican case. This is waterproof and dustproof. Glossy black. It's a fingerprint magnet. Opening it up, and you have an area for your IEMs. And a couple compartments for accessories, cables, and that type of thing. If you don't want to use the compartment, just pull out that insert. And you have two trays that you can use that are padded. Very, very nice case. And then you get the Mach 60. Now the Mach 60 is a very small IEM, very lightweight. They're extremely thin. They are made of plastic um, and they kind of have a working man's type of look to them. They're not very flashy. And you know, for an $1,100 IEM, they don't really jump out and grab you. But the purpose of the Mach 60 is to be a working stage monitor or a studio monitor type of setup. So. You don't really need anything flashy and if i were a musician or an artist um or a professional sound booth i wouldn't want something that would be super flashy and drawing attention i just want something that's going to be comfortable and look decent and uh give me the sound accuracy that i'm looking for so as you can see here the shelves are very small on the left it says mach 60 on the right you get the uh, West Tone logo. So this would be the left one. This would be the right one. And then on the back side, you have uh, red lettering for the right, blue lettering for the left. It's kind of a flat back shell and a short nozzle. Not in a super aggressive angle, but when you put the tips on, you get a lot of extension off of that nozzle. And so there that helps with the insertion. Now, depending on which way you wear your IEMs, whether you wear them behind your head or 
in the front, these are extremely comfortable. I find that they isolate outside noises extremely well, and they are um, probably somewhere 70-75% of outside noises being blocked, especially with the foam tips. It really, really helps with the isolation of outside noises. And in order to hear somebody talking, unless they're coming through your microphone, you're going to have to pop out an ear uh, piece. To use them for isolating outside noises around you, um, the only things I was really able to hear were really loud things like uh, carpet cleaners, vacuum cleaners, uh, and loud vehicles. I find that the comfort of them is also very good. I was able to uh, wear them for hours upon hours, upwards of six to eight hours at a time with the Westone Mach 60 in my ears before I got discomfort. The cable. The cable has very nice ear hooks, which helps to hold them in place while you have them either down the front or in the back. Ear hooks are very well controlled, nice and thin, but at the same time, very nice tension, just enough to do their job properly. They do connect with a T2 connection, which is similar to an MMCX, but it is smaller, and I find that it's easier to connect and disconnect, and it's also more durable and stays put and doesn't break as much as an MMCX connection. The cable does seem to be, on first look, to be a little bit cheap and a little bit lackluster for an $1,100 IEM, but actually it's a very good cable. I was rather impressed by the technology that's inside it. I'll put a link down for the Linum Estron Super BAX cable or BAX cable. Um, I'm going to um, put that link and you can read up on it. It is a silver Litz cable. Also has a unique uh, 0.75 ohms of impedance. And then you have a very nice cinch, which is important if you're doing professional work, especially on stage. You just squeeze it and it moves and locks in place. And uh, you aren't moving this whatsoever. So it does a good job of staying in place and holding your gear where you want it to. Terminates into a 3.5. You can also get it in a 4.4. So the Westone Mach 60. Very well built, exceptionally comfortable, and nice accessories, and a good quality cable. I find that the Mach 60 is not the easiest of IEMs to drive. I found that most USB-C dongles, DAPs, and desktop would drive them, but they do uh, respond better to a little bit more power. So every single dongle that I have, even super low-powered stuff, was able to drive them to volume. But I found that if you added in a little bit more juice and it gave them a little bit more of the current, that the Mach 60 kind of came alive and sounded better and more articulate and just more accurate in its reproduction. So I recommend that you use something with a little bit more power to drive the Mach 60, especially since they're 35 ohms and 100 dB sensitivity. The Westone Mach 60, how do they sound? Now, the Westone Mach 60 is for musicians and for uh, artists. And I find that it has a very neutral, natural presentation. The base of the Westone Mach 60 is a extended nicely into the sub base and you get a little bit of rumble and grumble there when called upon. So if you have it being portrayed in whatever you're playing on stage or in the track that you're reproducing, It'll give you a little bit there, but it's not this wow factor type of sub bass. It's not going to vibrate the IEMs out of your ears or rattle your teeth or anything of that sort. But you are going to notice, hey, there's a little bit of sub bass in this track. And it'll portray it accurately if it's on stage. Mid bass and upper bass are a little bit more focused. You're going to get a little bit more impact and slam there. But again, it's not this pounding, uh, overly forthright type of bass. This is a very neutral bass representation and it's a very accurate bass 
I find that it has a nice tone and timbre. Uh, instruments, vocalists sound very accurate and true. And it's very detailed. It's well controlled, has nice resolution. And overall, the bass is a very qualitative bass, not so much a quantitative bass. Going into the mids, the mids have a little bit of a natural warmth to them. And they have a, a bit of a just a organic sound and vocalists and instruments sound very accurate and true in their tone and timbre. And you can really dissect the instruments being played on the stage or in a track. You can go, oh, that's a clarinet. That's a flute. Oh, that's a trumpet. That's a trombone. Oh, that's a, a tuba. That, you know, that's a cello. That's a, a viola, violin, piano. You can really dissect the stage and understand what the different instruments are. And you can pick out an instrument and follow it all the way through the melody does a very good job with a natural reproduction of that instrument's tone and timbre. And then it has a, a little bit of note weight and a just an overall organic feel to the mids. And it's just a very pleasurable yet neutral presentation. And it's not too elevated and it's not recessed. It's very even, balanced, and cohesive. And as you go through octaves, instruments stay very even and controlled. And then the treble. The treble extends nicely into the upper treble you get a little bit of air and a little bit of space and there's nice sparkle and energy and at the same time just like the mids they're very even balanced and cohesive and they're not too elevated so you don't get a lot of hotness and a lot of forwardness and in the lower mids and upper treble regions you don't have a lot of brightness and just overall shoutiness it's a very even cohesive balanced presentation and the treble just like the mids has just enough of that naturalism to it and you can really follow through with instruments and vocalists that reside in those regions and you, you can just pick it apart and follow them through on, on the track. Soundstage of the Westone Mach 60 is phenomenal. I'm really impressed by the abilities of the Mach 60 soundstage to portray a stage, whether it's really small, comfy, intimate versus being a normal average size or large or grand it does a fantastic job of portraying differences in stages and it does a really good job with the depth on the stage you can really look into the stage and you can read into the different rows and you can even kind of place things and go oh there are five seats on the right side and that's one two that's three seats you know you can kind of pick apart the stage that way it does a really good job of being pinpoint laser accurate in its placement of instruments and vocalists and as things track across the stage you can follow them and it does a good job of just lasering in on them and going okay i'm stuck here and i'm gonna go and track it depth and layering is very good as tracks are more complex you can still pick apart the tracks and tell the differences between the vocalists and the instruments and it does a really good job of being cohesive and immersive but yet at the same time not portraying one thing over the other and not masking things it does a good job with being balanced cohesive and immersive tone and timbre is very good with the mach 60 i find it to be a very natural presentation and all the instruments and vocalists were very neutral in their presentation as well i found that it had a a very uh organic presentation everything sounds true to its lifelikeness and it, it, you can follow instruments through and vocalists through and you can get the proper note weight and overall it just sounds very natural and accurate in its presentation of tone and timbre and then details and resolution the details of the mach 60 are fantastic i was really impressed by how much information you can get and how well it's resolved and also how it's presented it is not forthright it's not forced upon you it is how it should sound in the reproduction and it's very even and focused and defined but yet at the same time controlled it has a very nice presentation of showing you when you're using it as a monitor this is all that's going on on your stage and here's how it's going to sound going out the mach 60 does a really good job of giving you the reproduction of what's happening on your stage 
or uh, it coming into your mix if you're a musician telling you here's what you have here's your notes and your tone and how you're going to play along it does a really good job of staying very neutral uncolored now if you want to color it you can add in eq and it does a really good job of showing off the differences in eq that you've tweaked so if you have your your neutral set for whatever you're you're playing on your stage or you're using as your monitor and then you want to eq it and add in a little bit or if you make some changes to what you're playing it reveals that and it shows the differences very well and it portrays differences in decks and amps as well the mach 60 is very revealing to what it is fed and also it shows you the differences of the gear so how does the west tone mach 60 compare to the adv m 512 d now the adv m 512 d is a unique presentation in that it has a very large sound stage with very good depth and layering the adv m 512 d excels with its sound stage and placement it's very immersive and very engaging the m 512 d though is more elevated in the mids and in the treble and will sound a little bit more forward and a little bit more forthright in its presentation also it will have just a little bit of ba tamper at times and will sound slightly metallic the bass will have a little bit more impact and slam and overall it has a little bit more uh, of a dynamic presentation versus the mach 60 which is a more neutral presentation and then my reference i am the ctm da vinci 10 now ctm da vinci 10 is very detailed very analytical leaning and it has more details and more resolution than the mach 60. the ctm da vinci 10 does have a little bit more sub bass presence and a little bit more of impact and slam in the mid bass and upper bass also in the mids it has a little bit thinner of a note weight and the upper mids and treble are slightly more elevated and it can come across as a little bit more forward and forthright and aggressive in its presentation the ctm da vinci 10 leans more analytical uh, clinical side of things whereas the mach 60 is more neutral and natural i find that the ctm da vinci 10 would be really good for using as a mixing and mastering along with the adv m 512 d would be better in that regard whereas the mach 60 is better for the monitoring purposes or to be able to pick apart a track in the recordings and, and listen to it in a more neutral presentation so should you get the west tone mach 60 now first and foremost 1100 is a lot of money to ask and on first first look at the mach 60 holding it in your hands and and seeing the plastic build and the, the thinner cables and things like that you might be turned off and be like eleven hundred dollars you should be getting a lot better quality build but after you really feel them and use them you'll realize that it is very well built and very quality built and it's purpose built for what its purpose is which is a stage monitor and if you are a professional or something somebody who is trying to get into the professional world as an artist or a musician the mach 60 would be a very good tool to help you um, along your way as a monitor as it's very uh, neutral very natural reproduction also very detailed and just does a good job of portraying everything around you in the more neutral and natural presentation if you're looking for an IEM that's going to give you a little pizzazz if you're going to get some more dynamics you're going to get a little bit punch and slam a little sparkle energy up top and it's going to be a little bit forward in the mids and, and you have this very immersive and engaging type of sound stage the mach 60 is not going to be for you you're going to find it to be a little bit boring and dull and a little bit too neutral but if you're looking for a neutral natural presentation as a regular listener and you want the the true guts of a reproduction of a track i recommend the mach 60. it's been dave the honest audio file thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Speak on the next video somewhere on the screen. Subscription links, notification bells if you haven't already. Please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. And check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact channel, follow channel, support channel, all that kind of stuff listed down below. Speaking of support and channel, I want to thank 
my su subscribers and supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. It's much appreciated all that you give to the channel. Thank you very much. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there's various ways that you can do that through one-time gifts with PayPal and Venmo, or you can do monthly subscriptions through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Uh, monthly subscriptions, you can get access to my private Discord servers, early access to videos, and all kinds of other sorts of things. So check out those links down below if you're interested in supporting the channel. It'd be much appreciated. And also check out the other links. There's uh, information regarding music recommendations, gear recommendations, and all kinds of other things. So check out the links down below. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.